Welcome everybody. Today is January 14th. Uh, today is the, the Board of uh, Commissioners regular meeting and we're called to order at 602. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Mayor Blank. Present. Vice Mayor Hodges. Here. Commissioner Weinstein. Here. Commissioner Andrews. Here. Commissioner Gather. Present. Vice Mayor Hodges, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and Thank the you. Um, invocation? <coughs> Our Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you to ask your divine guidance and help in our deliberations this evening. Bless the members of this commission and the citizens that are present at this meeting. We pray that our work this evening will find favor in your sight. Amen. <coughs> City clerk, please call the roll. Oh, she already did that. <laughs> there you go. Out of order. All right, next we have approval for the agenda. Madam Mayor, if I may interrupt. Yes. Um, in, in our uh, meetings, uh, there's a number of changes that I wanted to suggest and hopefully have adopted by the commission, but uh, one of the uh, most important changes, uh, the Veterans Boat Parade, and there's a presentation uh, that Pam Rasmussen has, and that's gonna be number A, or letter A, under presentations. And that'll be, uh, the other two will be renumbered B and C. Um, the, uh, I've got some feedback on the, the consent agenda, uh, the, Softball Association contract pricing um, it was going to go to the workshop. The uh, feedback that I was getting on the volleyball court use agreement, uh, if we don't address it tonight, it, it's not going to be in time for the season. So uh, I don't know if uh, it's up to if you all want to pull it and discuss it or if you want to pass it, it's, it's up to you all. Um, the seafood festival contract, um, the closeout, which is documented in, in the information, um, if you all want to pull that, but the three-year agreement that's proposed, that's going to be discussed at the workshop meeting, uh, if that's okay. And I didn't put it on the agenda because I wasn't sure what you all wanted to do, because this is your agenda. I can't change it once it's published, but you can modify it here. So that's why I'm bringing all these changes up to you. Um, and then the formation of friends, uh, I know that's been discussed before, but there was some feedback about putting that on the workshop agenda, um, uh, and the legal services agreement, uh, on the workshop agenda. The personnel changes are primarily an announcement on the changes, but I did redo the memo because, uh, there was even some discussion among staff, but I feel it's an additional, uh, the bookkeeper position is an additional position. And uh, obviously I'd like to bring that position on board as soon as we can. I have a memo for it. Uh, if you want to wait on it, I totally understand. But uh, by the time I got the, to the agenda and got in the ins and outs of it, I realized that the main thing I need from the commission is permission to add that position. Uh, into our budget, and that'll follow an amendment that'll be in March with the uh, budget amendments that uh, Mr. Pierce will be bring, will be bringing forward to you. Uh, and then uh, I just have a number of issues. So I'm going to take some of your time when we get under the manager's report. I just want to go over a couple issues with you. So. Okay. So then, on the consent agenda, we are moving everything to the workshop. Oh. Madam Mayor, if I may, Except, why, why don't we go through the presentations first? We get to talk about the consent agenda when we get past public comment. Pardon me? Once we get past public comment, we can we can then discuss what we want to keep on the consent agenda. I want We could keep these people here for a while, then, if we're going to go through the consent agenda right now. No, we're just saying what's going to be Oh, okay. It. That's Good. all. We're not all going right. to go through the consent agenda. Okay. It's the approval agenda, agenda is what we're doing now. Okay. Okay. So... As I understand it, the consent agenda 
we'll have the Keswick Beach Volleyball on there and the Seafood Festival three-year contract and everything else will be pulled or put uh, elsewhere. Actually, it'll be the closeout for the Seafood Festival for 2019. Oh, There's certain the provisions contract. and then the contract itself will go on to the workshop meeting. Um, Mayor, since the Keswick Beach Volleyball does include uh, finances, it does include the money, um, aren't we kind of supposed to, we sh it shouldn't be on the consent agenda, perhaps it can be new business and we can still vote on it tonight. Right. But because, okay, but because I have no problem, is, you can pull it off the consent agenda, it was just, that's where it was stuck, so. Right, I'm just suggesting that it should not be on the consent agenda because we've never ever discussed it. But I think with Mr. Commissioner Andrews' point, this is just to vote on the agenda, and then later on you can pull off what you want to pull. Uh, but we have the presentations to do between now. Okay. Have I confusion? Okay. Yeah, let's do, this. let's do the presentations. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that part. And I'll make a motion we approve That's the agenda um, subject to the changes we just discussed. Thank, Thank you. Do we have a second? I second. And I'll second. Oh, okay. All in favor? I mean, uh, the city clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Douthard? Yes. Commissioner Andrews? Yes. Commissioner Weinstein? Yes. Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Mayor Black? Present. Okay, next item is the um, presentations, and uh, we have no proclamations. Um, well, before I get started, I would like to recognize some dignitaries in the audience today. Uh, we have, and these people are here to hear Camus Maxson's presentation, so I'm glad that everyone is here. Uh, we have uh, from C Congressman Charlie Chris's office, we have, I'm sorry I forgot your name. Li uh, Kendrick. <laughs> Kendrick says, Thank thanks for being here. And also uh, Principal Atik is here. Somewhere. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, going forward, we have, um, the check presentation for the boat parade. Another check for the new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Pam Rasmussen. This is Roger Gerstung, and we both run the Veterans Boat Parade that's always the weekend closest to Veterans Day. This year was our 23rd uh, year to have that parade, and we had some record numbers. We raised a record amount of money, and we had a record number of boats. How many? 54, 54 boats, and so that's a lot of boats for a boat parade. <laughs> And I want to thank Mayor Maggie Black. Last year about this time when we did our check presentation, she brought it in front of the commission to ask for a resolution so that uh, Madeira Beach could be our title sponsor for the next five years. And they all said yes and uh, agreed to that. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> this was year one of that, so we've got four more years to work on them for another five or ten. Now, this parade's a lot more than just a parade. Um, we work all year long and we do fundraising events throughout the community. And all the money that we raise goes to local veterans charities right here in Pinellas County. Um, and so the checks that we give away tonight are not the only checks or the only amount of money that we uh, donate. Some of the other charities that we've given to are Reefs Across America that put all the reefs on Bay Pines um, grave sites for our veterans. Um, what else? Uh, Fisher House, which houses family members of those that are at Bay Pines or in hospice care or something along those lines. Um, Vet Relief Project, Autism in Pinellas County, Shriners Kids, Tampa Bay Troop Support, which they send packages overseas to our deployed veterans. So we helped them with some of their postage. I think the last time they said they sent stuff overseas, it was uh, $7,500 it cost them. And they're a charity, so we helped them with that. The USA Patriots amputee veteran softball team that was here in town, Jay Hatch and his uh, rec department did a great job with that event the first time they ever had that. So 
I hope we can get them back here again this year. Um, we also donate to the Sea Cadets, Eckerd Search and Rescue Team, the Jim Memorial uh, Foundation, and the Bridge the Gap program. What that is is they help veterans that come back from overseas and they get them acclimated to civil, civilian life again or help them get jobs and things like that because they get so used to having somebody tell them what time they can eat, what time they can pee, what they have to wear and things like that, that coming back into civilian life is kind of hard sometimes. So what we did this year is we instituted, reinstituted a category that we had in the past and it was a military uh, organization category. So if you were in a boat that was represented by the VFW, the American Legion, the Auxiliaries, the Sons of the American Legion, VFW, any of those organizations, if you were in one of those boats, we put you in a separate category, and the winner of that, we were donating $300 to the charity of their choice. And so this year, the winner, uh, Dick Sagovich, said that he wanted his 300 donated to bridge the gap. So he was very nice on having that happen. <clears throat> I also want to thank, I'm glad Chief O'Neill's here tonight to give him the proper credit for allowing our uh, couple of our firemen to get in the jet skis and be part of our safety patrol. Homeland Security mandates that we have a safety patrol for the, the boat parade. So those two gentlemen on the jet skis along with Eckerd Search and Rescue, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Marine Patrol, uh, Treasure Island had their uh, sheriff's boat here, as, long as, uh, as well as the Coast Guard from San Key sent a boat down to help us with all that. So thanks, Chief. We really appreciate all the help you guys give us. So before we give away any of our charity checks, um, there's a contest I'll let Roger talk a little bit about. We started it three, four years ago, and it's our backyard party contest, and it doesn't seem like many people know about it. So hopefully tonight they will. Okay, so what we wanted to do was get <clears throat> not only people on the water involved in the Veterans Boat Parade, but people that are on the docks and along the sea walls and whatnot that, that are viewing the parade, <clears throat> excuse me, also involved. Um, there's been limited amount of involvement over the years, uh, and we're trying to bring more awareness to the parade um, from the shoreline. So we instituted a, um, a prize for the best backyard party, and it seems like every year we give it to the same backyard, and they just keep growing and growing and growing and bigger and bigger. And uh, Amanda and her husband would like you to come up and um, explain a little bit about your party as we, as we make the turn into John's Pass. Um, their house is there waiting for us, and there's seems like a thousand people there. <laughs> um, we uh, started this party uh, when we found out there was one. We bought a house. I was cleaning it up. Uh, well, I was cleaning it, and I heard all this noise. I'm like, what the hell is this noise? And come to find out, I bought a house on the water that had a veteran's boat parade. So we knew that we were going to do something when we, re when we uh, retired, and we retired in 2013. Um, we... We had a lot of grass back then, and so we painted our yard, the American flag. When I say we, that's me, because um, my husband, working. he was working. I was working. So we spent uh, a lot of time, a lot of money going into that uh, flag. Uh, we since did some demolition and rebuilt, and we don't have that grass anymore, so we had to come up with something new. So we started doing this billboard uh, with the years of service of all our service members that attend a party. Each year we have people coming from Hawaii, Germany, all over the United States uh, that are veterans, friends of ours. Everybody in our backyard is either a veteran, spouse of a veteran, it's daughter, a it's a child of a veteran or parent of a veteran. Um, and we've used this party uh, to help heal a lot of the Vietnam veterans uh, who at first did not want to come to our party and have since decided to, you know, this is the best kind of healing for us is at our party. Um, it's a couple of day event and I'm very thankful for the sheriff's office for um, tolerating us because uh, we do take up quite some space on the roads. Um, the party starts on Friday night, so the first people usually get in around Tuesday. So, <laughs> So, so it's a big week. We um we entertain them. We uh, supply all the food and all the booze, and we do have a designated driver that actually comes from uh, D.C. We support the local community. We have all our people stay at a at a, uh, a family run hotel here on the beach. Um, so we try to keep it safe, uh, and um, you know we take care of our veteran friends the best we can. 
uh, we have won, and I know that a lot of people are a little upset about that, or could be upset, but what you need to know is every year that we win something, we typically donate it. So the first year we donated our prize to a veteran who was opening a new business and uh, donated a Komodo dragon. Uh, the second year we won a TV, we donated it to the Elks Lodge. Uh, we did keep the prizes of the kayaks. Um, and then this year, this year we did uh, donate some of it back, but we decided to help pay for some of the, the kegs of beer that we went through. <laughs> so, so we do try to give back to the community, and, and our party is filled with nothing but veterans, and we're happy to be in this community where we can celebrate this party. And if you want to say Go ahead. Check, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we have a check for $500, and uh, you can spend it on your party, or you can donate. Or I know you uh, you provide for everybody anyway, so it doesn't matter where it goes. It's going to go back to the vets anyway. You yep. donate back to them. Yeah. 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 She gave 100 back to the Veterans Boat Parade too, so that we could put it where we we send our funds to. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks Thank for your participation. You. It's awesome. Sure. You do a great job. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, as as we go around the boat parade route, um, there's you know all different sorts of backyard parties, and and hers actually stands out because of the amount of people that they have. They, they there's generally three or four hundred people in their backyard, and they no, no? one hundred fifty. Okay, it just it just seems like that many. I, <clears throat> but um, the deputy's here. <laughs> okay. But uh, I mean, we we've got um, one group that are of Civil War reenactors, and um, for years they would be in full dress uniform of, um, from the Yan of the Yankees, and they would fire their muskets as we come around the corner. Um, the last three years, they have a, a replica full size field cannon. <laughs> so as we come around the corner, <laughs> they let that thing fly, and it's loud. Uh, everybody gets startled, but it, it puts out a nice flame, and every kind of just sounds, uh, you know, like it belongs. Um, we reached out to him last year uh, after Amanda had won the backyard party, and we gave him one of our large screen TVs. He's a um, retired teacher, uh, kind of homebound, and he just started crying. I mean, saying that. so that's our way of, you know, thanking him. We also gave another uh, family up here who had um, two children. Um, and they had a picture of Grandpa in his full-service uniform out there, and, and they were honoring their grandfather who had served. Uh, so that's kind of what we're trying to do with the backyard party is to get the people on shore involved in the, uh, the Veterans Boat Parade, parade as well um, as the people on the water. Yep. So let's give some money away. Yeah. <clears throat> so moving on, uh, Commissioner Douthard, if you wouldn't mind joining us down here. Last year we gave to one of the DAV chapters in Clearwater that was in need of some much in need of some funds. Um, so we decided we'd give to the DAV again this year, the Disabled American Veterans. So this year we're keeping it a little closer to home. We're giving it to uh, Chapter 13 in St. Petersburg. And for those of you that don't, don't know, Commissioner Douthard is a service officer for the DAV. And maybe he can tell you guys a little bit more about exactly what all they do, but they help the veterans get some of their benefits that need them. So, I'd like to give that 2,000. <laughs> Good evening. What I do for DAV is I'm a service officer at VA. I have an office there, and two days a week I'm up there and I'm helping veterans apply for their benefits um, and working through the different processes um, to help them get their benefits um, and what they need to do in order to get their benefits. So it, it's an ongoing thing that I've been doing for like four years now. Um, it's very rewarding to help these veterans. We help the homeless veterans. We help veterans get their benefits. So we do all these different things for the veterans. But thank you. Thank you. Can you see it? So next coming up to join Roger and I is uh, Nate Witt. He works at Bay Ponds. He's in the volunteer services. And since Roger and I started running the boat parade, we, um, we'd get all kinds of phone calls and questions. Hey, my neighbor just passed away and his dad had uh, a, 
artificial leg and they didn't want to put it through the crematory with them. So what can I do with it? And I'm like, I don't know. I just run the boat parade. So I call <laughs> Nate. And if Nate doesn't have the answer for me, he makes sure that he gets the answer. So what we'd like to do this year is donate $5,000 to Bay Pines. Um, every year we try to... Every year we try to give to some charities or different organizations that help with PTSD, veteran suicide, homeless veterans, and a new one to us this year is uh, military sexual trauma. And I didn't even know anything about that till I read up about it just this past year when I got a pamphlet from Bay Pines. And so we're going to ask Nate to make sure that each of those organizations or those programs get the appropriate amount of money from us. And it's just our way to help those veterans coming back that need the help. Great. Thank you. One other thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to work with uh, Nate on, is the homeless veterans, the, the females, always seem to get left out whenever they're trying to count them to see how many we have in the county or the state or across the country. They always get left out because they don't want people to think of them as a homeless veteran. Um, they already have enough stigma attached to them being a female veteran. Um, so I'm going to take $1,000 of what I just gave to Nate, and I'm going to make sure that female homeless veterans get women's underwear, women's bras, women's socks, women's hygiene products, anything for a woman that she would need if she's homeless, we're going to make sure that $1,000 of that goes towards them. So thanks, Nate. <laughs> so next we'd like to ask Mike Delancey Sr. to come up with us. Um, He's with WWAR, which is Wounded Warrior Ability Ranch. And if you don't know anything about that, uh, look him up. It's actually uh, he and his son doing it together, Mike Delancey Jr., who was a uh, Army Marine. He was a Marine veteran. Um, and there's a video that we're going to show you here in just a second. Mike Jr. couldn't be with us today because he's in school and he's going to class. And by gosh, he wasn't going to miss class tonight. So we're going to run this video and you're going to get to meet Mike Jr. here. While you're watching that, Dad's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he usually does this. WWAR is Wounded Warriors Ability Ranch, and our main focus and foundation of everything is to take injured veterans and show them that things you love to do before you got hurt are still out there. Mike Jr. and Mike Sr. have a passion and a drive for this goal and this journey that they've started on. And it's evident in both of them that they love this, every bit of it, and that they've got a vision of what they want to see it become. On September 1st of 2006, my squad was on dismounted foot patrol in Hadith, Iraq. And during this foot patrol, I was shot by an enemy sniper. I don't remember the next month and a half of my life. Everything went black. At that point, I was told that I died five times and that I was transported from Iraq to Germany to DC. They transported me to the Tampa VA to do rehab there. And that's when the city of Pinellas Park approached me with perfect timing and asked for my input on a piece of land that they had. So we came up with a 10 acre park that's not just ADA accessible, but designed around the wheelchair user. And that was sort of the kick in the butt that we needed to get official and established as a 501c3. That was in June of 2015. We've come a long way since then. What the folks at WWAR and the city of Pinellas Park have basically built out of nothing is incredible. And what it provides is even better. We'll have a half mile trail, a dog park, a multi-purpose court where most of the wheelchair sports will be played as well as outdoor fitness stations. Our main fundraising goal is to build our headquarters building. Our headquarters building will have a great room to host different indoor activities, our offices, storage, and a resource center. We've done a lot of events since we kicked off, and one of the most memorable times was when a Vietnam veteran's wife approached me and said, my husband hasn't left the house in 10 years, and he decided to go to your event because he didn't want to let his brothers down. 
and this is the first time I've seen a smile on his face since I can remember. To me, that captured what WWR is about, and that's what makes me want to strive for and continue to do what we're going to do for the next decade. We decided that our very first event was going to be called the Alive Ride, and that was to help me celebrate my Alive Day with the police escorted bicycle ride through the city. The Alive Ride is a special event that commemorates the day not that Mike got hurt, but the day that he was alive. There's adaptations in everything you do in life. And to see the hand cyclists out there continuing to bike just as hard as they did before they got hurt is what we're about at WWAR. Seeing all the children waving the flags and yelling USA, USA, just really shows us that that's the future. And to see them just as supportive as their mom and dad's was really a powerful statement. Without the community and donor support, we would not have gotten us off the ground. And to be able to show them where their money and their support is gone, it's just a really great feeling. I can't think of a father-son combo uh, that can better make it happen. I met Mike a little over a year ago when Roger and I were trying to consider the charities we wanted to donate to last year, and we went a little different route. But when I was talking to Mike on the phone, he got done, he's like, nobody has grilled me about this charity like you have. And I'm like, I'm just asking you the questions that everybody asks me about charities when we're running the boat parade. Um, and then this year I had a chance to, to work with him when Jay Hatch and the Rec Center did the USA Patriots event for the amputees. I talked to Mike senior about, hey, I know you've got wheelchair football, I mean wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby, and different wheelchair sports. Would you mind bringing the basketball team over and do a, a exhibition game? And he's like, sure. And then they also offered their bus that they have free of charge to transport those vets around that weekend while they were here. So we really appreciate that. Mike, thank, thank you. you. Thank so you. what we'd like to do I know your next phase is uh, your, your headquarters and your building and your garden area and a rec center. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to make this donation of $10,000. So we're about half the room, so it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to be real short. Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't been by the park, please do. Please do. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you and what Mike Jr. is doing for our veterans. Thank you. So that concludes this year's uh, parade. Oh, what else do we have? Oh, Roger's got something else. That's right. Mayor Black, um, we just want to give you a picture of actually one of the um, participants and one of the winners of the boat parade, our own firefighter, John Slebby. Um, I just made a memorial little plaque that says, thanks to the city of Madeira Beach. <laughs> and uh, happy to put his picture on there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Nope. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, and thank all the rest of you guys Definitely. up there on the dais. We really appreciate it. Thank See you all next year. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Madam Mayor, if I may. Uh, this is the community spirit of Madeira Beach. Um, and events like this that we have, and, and Pam and Roger have really worked hard, and all the volunteers, so uh, my hat's off to all of them. But it's 
events, quality events that we have like this that I think bring our community together. Next, uh, we have a presentation from Camus Maxson. Uh, she is here to talk about trash on the beach. She is a very uh, passionate young lady who has a lot of concerns about trash. Um, Commissioner, I just wanted to introduce Camus. Um, she came to me a few weeks ago, and her energy and passion is just, you know, it's contagious. So. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm excited to hear her ideas, and I know she's very excited to share them with you all. So, yeah, Hi, everybody. Uh, my project, or my PowerPoint, is called Save the Sea Animals. My name is Camus Maxson. I'm in the fourth grade at Madeira Beach Elementary School, and my teacher is Miss Cottle. why I'm here today. The question you may be asking yourself is why in the entire cosmic universe is a 10 year old girl standing here talking to the city council? Well, let me tell you, um, the necessary seaweed gets raked back to the water's edge to get swept into the ocean, but the problem is the trash goes with it. And this is just to show you how far away it is from the ocean and how close it is to it. Uh, I've documented my finds over the years. I found a crate piece, uh, a spoon, a uh, metal plastic junk thing, and a single-use plastic water bottle. And I'll be getting to single-use plastics in a minute. And then that's the whole uh, bag I found one day. When I found out, when I saw this problem, I contacted the mayor, and this is, and that's the email I wrote to her. She invited me to meet at City Hall, and she, to talk about some solutions, and then she also invited me here to the city council meeting, and that's the reason that I'm standing here talking to you all is because of Miss Mayor Black. And she invited me here because I had some ordinances that I wanted to speak about. That includes balloons, styrofoam, cigarettes, and single-use plastic. My proposed ordinances, no more cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and cigars. This is on the beach. Single-use plastics on the beach. Styrofoam on the beach. And balloons in the city limits. Cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and cigars are, are some of the most commonly found trash pieces on the beach. There is a proposed ban across the state, but it may not pass, and why wait when we can do it now? And the best part is we can still keep our beaches clean. My next um, ordinance to ban is single-use plastic. That includes H2O slash soda bottles, plastic silverware, plastic to-go cups, and plastic straw and lids. Straws and lids. Other countries are turning down sub. Uh, seven Caribbean islands will ban the use of single, have banned the use of single use plastic in the year 2020. Food in the nude, this is in New Zealand, ditching plastic packaging of fruit and vegetables in supermarkets. Even France is doing their part since they're halfway across the globe. France to phase out single-use plastic starting January 1st. Let me say, everybody, we're behind the times. Uh, and South Africa, plastic waste fills ocean along South Africa coastline. Um, this is the some of the big ones I found. Some, that's my biggest collection I found when I'm just randomly walking. And if this keeps up, we're just adding to their coastline and it'll become our coastline as well. Some examples of alternatives to plastic. 
businesses can sell and make more money if they like brand and sell their own swill bottles. Can I have my swill bottle? Um, a swill bottle like mine, like this. Um, they can also make plastic ones if they want to, like at Disney or at Universal. And a funny story. I went, my family got guppies one day, and there were biodegradable utensils and napkins. Also, businesses could put in water refill stations so people could just go refill their water and be out for the day and just move on. Styrof my next ordinance is styrofoam. This includes containers, coolers, and cups. Some examples of alternatives to styrofoam, Publix and Target carry biodegradable coolers that aren't that expensive. And back to my guppy story, they also had biodegradable um, to-go uh, boxes and uh, condiment cups. My favorite part of the presentation is balloons. Just say no in the city limits. I see them on realtor signs. I also see them in parking lots a lot, and sometimes even at the beach. Let me read this quote from you from VOP, Voice of Planet. Balloons do not go to heaven. They land in the ocean and choke sea turtles, kill dolphins, and whales. And this is from the dodo. In the wild, here's what really happens when you let go of a balloon, and it's just too heartbreaking just to explain it, and I'm sure everyone can probably envision what happens. And my other actions, I do beach cleanup, sometimes with my best buddy Jude. Jude, can you stand up? <laughs> Wave hi. <laughs> I met with the local trash pirate contact, Miss Deb Laramie, back there. <laughs> and I started my own youth beach cleanup called organization called Madeira Beach Trash Turtles. If any of you guys would like to ask me any questions about that, please ask me before I leave today. And I suggested, f and I plan to raise money for future ways to help the environment. An example, Gobi. Gobi is a fish, it's a sculpture, and he's in India right now. And it has a sign on it, and it says, Gobi love tra loves trash, please feed him. And everyone is in India is all crowding around Gobi, like, oh, I want to feed Gobi, I want to feed Gobi. And it's just a fun way to clean up the environment. And let me read something from the Gobi article. Fish that eat plastic. These ones, we don't mind. And suggested flash pickup when storms come. That means I would email the trash turtles, Mad Beach trash turtles. We would go out before or after high tide or before or after storms. Thank you all for your time today and everyone's support here. And is there any questions? Well, first of all, I would like to say, I don't know any other fourth grader who even knows what an ordinance is. So congratulations on that. Um, does anyone have any questions for Camus? Yes. Um, it's madbeachtrashturtles.org, I think? That's no, dot com. That's it's uh, madbeachtrashturtles at gmail.com. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions, comments, concerns? Or is that it? I want to thank you so much, Camus, for your um, concern for the environment and your community, and most of all, for making a difference and being here. Thank you. Personnel recognition. Next item on the agenda is personnel years of service awards. City manager. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor and Commission, uh, we've 
been able to recognize our firefighters uh, through their service awards, and we've got some catching up to do, so I'm uh, going to ask the assistance of uh, uh, Kurt and Karen so we can uh, acknowledge our uh, employees that have reached those uh, service criteria or service plateaus, I guess. Uh, Kurt, can you read off our names, please? And Thank you, Mr. Mayor Daniels. Uh, Mayor. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, on behalf of this board and the city manager, we express our congratulations and gratitude for the dedicated public service provided to our community by the following employees of the city of Madeira Beach. Uh, the following employees are recognizing five years of service at the end of 2019. Frank DeSantis, the building official. John Sleppy, firefighter paramedic. Chris Tarkenton, fiscal coordinator. Carl McGaughy, firefighter and paramedic. Jay Hatch, Recreation Director, Quint Belk, Fire Inspector, Kenny Davis, Public Works Technician, Karen Paulson, HR and Financial Coordinator. And the following employees are recognizing the following number of years of service, 20 more years at the end of 2019, John Williamson, Sanitation. Other milestones include 22 years, Kenneth Zagera, Public Works Supervisor, 26 years, Mark Wise, Sanitation, 28 years, Chris Mecco, Recreation and Grounds Maintenance, 31 years, Deb Laramie, Park Supervisor, and 41 years, Donna Roll, Financial Assistant. The employees will be getting plaques from Karen, our HR Director. Um, we won't take the board's time today doing that. Um, Mr. City Manager is going to do double duty here and take a couple of quick pictures for us. Thank you, sir. Congratulations to all the dedicated employees of the City of Madeira Beach. Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone for their collective years of service, which adds up to 208 years. Wow. <laughs> Next on the agenda is public comment. This is for anything that is not on the agenda. Um, does anyone wish to speak? Public comment is now closed. All right, now we have the consent agenda. And I think we have some, some of these will be moved to the workshop, if uh, we all agree. The National Softball Association, would everyone agree to move that to the workshop? Yes, okay. correct. Uh, B, we're going to discuss the Keswick Beach Volleyball in a moment. The Seafood Festival contract, I would like to move everything except the three-year contract to a workshop. No, no. No, the, the vice opposite. versa. The opposite. Vice versa, right. Uh, and formation of Friends of Madeira Beach and Parks and Recreation Group, I would also like to move to a uh, workshop, um, as well as legal services agreement. And then, so far, does everyone agree to those changes? Yes, I do have that substitute memo. If you'd like for me to give that to each of you, and you can make a determination if you want to decide on this tonight or not, that's up to you. Okay. Um, but it, it w was not on the agenda in this form. It was in that personnel uh, changes, but and it was part of that memo, but it should have really just been this document. So if you'll allow okay. me to substitute it, I will, and you can decide if you want to discuss it or keep it on the agenda. All right. I'm not seeing that, but... I'm going to give it to you oh, right now. Okay. I'm sorry. I want to approach unless you all were willing to at least...
right. So if, if I'm understanding this correctly on personnel changes, we will, I think we need to move the changes to staff report and then this memorandum will be part of the consent agenda. If that's what you'd like to do or it's, you can pull it to discuss. Is everyone? Madam Mayor, I, I'd, I'd like to actually like to chime in on this. I, I, I'm fine with most of the personnel changes on the initial document going through. I mean, these are the uh, city manager's decisions, so uh, whether I agree with them or not is, is irrelevant. Um, you know, as long as obviously we stay within budget. But I'm a little dismayed on a few things here. First of all, you know, this started off as a budget amendment, and why in the world would it? This was initially a $47,000 budget amendment. Now it's a $22,000 budget amendment. We're not even going to discuss it. We're just going to keep it on the consent agenda. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, in earlier in the document before, we I saw we were reclassifying some positions um, within parking and zoning. Or, I'm sorry, with um, in the parking department, and we were eliminating a position, the planning and zoning administrator. So my question on that is, are we planning to backfill that position this year? Because I think with the discussions on impact fees that we're going to have and the development activity that we're seeing, it seemed a little odd to eliminate that position. So frankly, you know, if I'm being fair here, I don't want a memo in six months saying, hey, you know, we want to you know, put this back in the budget and we want to keep doing it. Um, Again, you know, I, I've stated my position all along. For a budget amendment, something's got to be mission critical for us to do a budget amendment for it. And I will get to my reason for that in a minute. But, you know, probably the most important part of this is we're creating a new position at the marina, and we're just going to kind of brush by it here in a memo. Um, as a marina bookkeeper, you know, from what I understand already, this has been advertised, interviews were conducted, and we already have a candidate. But... I, I, somebody's got to tell me why that we are advertising, interviewing a candidate and making a financial offer, offer to a position that this board voted down in June of this year. Okay, um, This board, not any other board. It was, you know, in, in June 2019, uh, Mr. Pierce and Mr. Evans made a plea for this position. Commissioner Weinstein made a motion and nobody seconded it. It never even got voted on. And now it gets put on the consent agenda, which is usually... What we'd usually do with the consent is the magic wave of the hand, and it's stuff that we don't need to discuss. At the very least, I think this needs to be discussed and walked through. Um, you know, and, and I, I just kind of, what happened to the fact that we didn't approve this position? That's why we're here tonight. Okay, but that, but why was it on the consent agenda, if that's the case? I mean, well, that should have been discussed in, I mean, that should have been new business. If it's, if it's a new position, that should have been new business, and we should have been discussing it. Um, you know, and, and I, I think what really kind of disturbs me on that is we're being presented with the same position, basically the same position we were presented in June that, got, that failed, but we're not really getting any more information. There's no new numbers. We're using the same numbers that we used in June. We don't even have the marinas doing at this point because the numbers that we're going off of are the fiscal year 2018 numbers, which ended September of 2018. That's 15 months ago. So we don't even have a basis point to jump off of here to go forward on this. So uh, my plea to you guys is I, I don't think it's prudent, and I think at the very least it's fiscally irresponsible not to know where we are financially before we commit another $50,000 to the marina when we don't know where we are. Um, you know, and Walter just handed me a thing, and I haven't, obviously, he handed it to me at the beginning of the meeting, I haven't even had a chance to see it. Our revenues at the marina are off at least $120,000 this year based on what I'm reading. Okay? We, we pumped $50,000 into a marina audit. We did anywhere from the changes, we're going to be anywhere from $150,000 to $250,000 in changes to the marina, and it's $125,000 a year to maintain all those changes, and we turn around and we lost $120,000. That's not the way this was supposed to work. So my, my point is, let's pull back here a little bit. This isn't a mission-critical position. Uh, you know, Megan's been doing it for a long time, and I don't, I'm not going to get into why she was moved. I don't know why she was moved, but... You know, I think we need to pull back a little bit of this and discuss this, at least in a workshop, to find out exactly what's going on here. And maybe somebody's going to say something different than they said to us in June in order to win over this position. Thank you. I think I agree with Mr. Andrews that this needs to be moved to the workshop. 
also so we can discuss it. But what, what I'd like to see at a workshop also, uh, city manager and finance director, is more of a history, okay? Because I remember when we went, I remember very clearly when we, uh, when I made that motion, and I don't really, uh, I don't really remember what happened after that, okay? So I think that what we do need is not just to discuss it at the workshop, but to have some background information as to how the whole thing started off, because I don't know that Commissioner Andrews figures, uh, you know, I, I want the figures from the finance director, okay, as to where we are with the, with the uh, marina so far this year. But I think more importantly is the, yeah, the history of, of how this position got started and why we still need it. Couldn't agree with you more, Commissioner. That's why it can't be put on a consent agenda to be rushed through. I think we need to discuss it. I think we need to figure out exactly what's going on. And we already did vote it down, and uh, you, know, you can... My, my, my history, uh, my memory is pretty good, but if, uh, there, there are minutes on the meeting that we can, we can go over. Uh, but you did make a motion on that. I'm not blaming you for making a motion. I'm just saying you made a motion on it, nobody seconded it, and now we're not, and now all of a sudden it's like, okay, well now we're gonna do it, and we have no new information in order to approve this position, so I think we just need to reel it back a little bit. Let's find out what's going on. Let's find out where we are in the Marina and if this position is actually necessary, that's all. And mm -hmm. I think the other thing is, you know, uh, from my understanding, when I heard about this, it's, it's more than just a bookkeeper for the marina. It's for several different enterprises. And I think all that needs to be brought to, up front, too, at the workshop. Yeah, that's what I had forgotten. Thank you for reminding me of that, because it was. It was to be a division of, uh, division of three different funds that were going to trip that we're going to be contributory yeah, no toward this purpose. Yeah, but if, if all of that can be just put back in a package together and given back to us, I think it'll make more sense and we can move forward. Sounds good. Okay, I think we have consensus on that. Um, so personal changes, we are putting the uh, marina manager, no, the well, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, Maggie. I, I think we need to put it all on there because I think there's a couple things on there because we've got... There's budget amendments no matter which way we're doing this when they're coming through. I mean, I don't, I don't care people's positions and titles. That's great. But I think all these budget amendments that are being, I, I, want, I want them explained to me so that we know what's going on. I, okay. Nobody gets any more money until, I mean, we, there's got to be someplace else to find it. So that's, that's, that, that should be our mantra for 2020. All right. You know, I think the, the only problem, uh, and talking to the city manager before, is if we don't pass the volleyball tonight, then it's going to be too late for this year. You know, but this is not the first time that something comes to us the last dag on minute and puts us behind the eight ball. Either we support it or, or you know, we look terrible for not supporting it um, because somebody didn't get it to us in a timely manner. Um, so I, I just kind of feel, you know, that um, we need to look at the softball one tonight. You know, I don't think we're talking very much money, um, but, uh, you know, it's either that or we just take it off altogether for, uh, for this year because it's going to be too late because their season, I guess, starts before this whole, uh, before even our workshop. So we're not going to have the opportunity. So um, I don't know how the rest of you feel on this. If, we need to push it to the workshop, which means it won't be done this year, or do we want to talk about this one, one, one thing? John, you're talking about B, right? The Keswick yeah, Beach correct. Volleyball? Yeah. Jay, how long is that discussion going to take? I mean, your, your presentation is what, two minutes? Excuse me. Um, yeah, it's not going to be all that long. It's a fee waiver of $350, but we're under the consent agenda. So really, it's whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it, and then we can discuss it. I, I don't think it's proper to have everybody come in and weigh in on the consent agenda. So we can do that under um, new business? That's correct. Right. And it won't take long. I mean, I, I just... Okay. Okay. So then that leaves the only thing on the consent agenda is the pro forma for the Seafood Fest then, correct? Right. The 2019 closeout, right. basically. Okay. I make a motion to pass the 
remainder or what's left on the consent agenda. The one thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'll second. First thing and seconding? <laughs> So uh, I made a motion to pass the consent agenda with the changes item, that were made. Yeah, for item C, basically, is the only thing. Correct. The, the pro forma for the seafood fest minus the contract. Okay, because I have some questions on the seafood festival. Um, no, then we okay. need to move it off of there because it's a consent okay, agenda. Okay, then we need to move it off. Well, yeah, because I do have so, several questions. So I just need to clarify questions. So we should move it to... Yeah. Yep. Well, actually, Sorry, that would be I know business. we're just not, you know, we just put, didn't put it together right. Madam Mayor, can I make a suggestion of moving the closeout for the 2019 Seafood Festival to the old, old business. business? Yeah, old business. Unfinished, business. Unfinished, unfinished business. Unfinished business, thank you. Unfinished business. I'm just an You're old right. guy. Right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and just a point of clarification, uh, so we don't cast stones at, at uh, Jay because he does a great job. I require the items to be a month ahead of time so I can guarantee, tea, guarantee the Board of Commissioners that you get your agenda a week ahead of time. So they get the information in, we filter it, whatever has to go to legal, we get questions answered and so forth in time for you all to get it a week ahead of time before your meeting, unlike what you had before. So. It's not that these items were late. It was just that they were too late to make the December agenda. So that's why we have them here in January. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we move the items we talked about to either unfinished business or new business or staff reports and do not pass the consent agenda. I second, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. City Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Downther? Yes. Commissioner Andrews? Yes. Commissioner Weinstein? Yes. Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Mayor Black? Yes. Next on the agenda under underfinished business is right. the seafood festival contract. Okay. Um, Madam Mayor and Commissioners, just real quick, I do have the, the head coach uh, for the volleyball team here uh, waiting for all this stuff, and not, not that what I have to talk about is not interesting. Um, is it possible that we can move that around just to just discuss the, the volleyball conversation first, just to allow her to get home um, this evening? Sure. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. Yes. Is it, oh, everyone agrees? Okay. okay. So we're taking um, Keswick Beach from – were those three to new business or just – uh, I just think this item would be good to take it out of order, and uh, okay. that's yeah. the commission's okay with that. And that's fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's okay. That you want to speak about it? Yes. So, um, essentially, uh, we were recently contacted by uh, Keswick Christian uh, High School volleyball program about usage of our courts uh, at Archibald. Um, the proposal that I have in front of you all is uh, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, uh, four to five thirty in the evening. Uh, so it's really off hours as far as. Um, the beach that's usually when people start if they're there during the week they start going home and then we start to get a little rush after that for the sunset um, as far as the volleyball courts go um, outside of the one resident group uh, that was running the courts that has has since uh, gone forward and asked for free rentals which we eventually passed uh, we don't the volleyball courts don't get rented um, I, I, I could say in my five years we've had maybe two or three total rentals in, in lieu of revenue. Um, and then, to be honest, you know, we're actually coming through with the fee schedule here, uh, I'm going to say next month, and there's going to be a, a change proposed on the volleyball court as well then. So that's what this number is. Uh, if we were to do a waiver of the fee for them to utilize the courts uh, in the afternoons, uh, we're looking at a waiver of about $300. Um, Previously, they've, they've used courts. I mean, Keswick, if you're not familiar with it, is, is essentially just over the bridge, um, maybe maybe a mile from here, a little over a mile. Uh, and we actually, some of their after-school care kids or our after-school care kids have attended the school there. So it's it's a school that we do have a relationship with and we've, we've done stuff for in the past. Uh, so with this, we were just looking for an opportunity um, to be a good community partner. And, and it doesn't really cost us anything as far as, you know, it gets raked with the beach rake in the mornings. Uh, as far as any sort of maintenance or any sort of request, if there's something that, that they're asking for to 
make it a better experience for them. We've essentially said if we waive the fees, then if you need something out there equipment-wise, then, then you guys can pay for it. So it would just be a, kind of a wash. Um, and, and for us, it's, it's new eyes on the beach. They're going to be playing other teams. They'll probably host some home matches. Um, I, I, just, I think it's a, a really unique opportunity for us to become the home site for somebody like this. Um, you know, if we, if we had more schools in the area that were closer, and uh, especially the uh, uh, Madeira Beach Fundamental School, if they had uh, an intramural program or something, I, I would, I'd be going after that as us to be the host site as well. So uh, it, it's kind of a bragging rights thing, uh, you know, playfully, but it's also, I think it's a great uh, community partnership opportunity. So, and if you guys have any questions, uh, of course, you know, I can answer, and um, she can as well. I'd like to make a motion to pass, let's see. Well, wait, I have a wait, we, we have to, have, is there any commission discussion? I would just like to ask, like to ask Jay, um, what do we charge now for the volleyball? I mean, you said that there's no participation or people don't use it. So is it maybe something that should be considered um, defunct for charging at all? If, if nobody ever, if we don't get any income from it, maybe it should be for free for anybody. Yeah, I, oddly enough, we had that. Well, I don't remember which group it was with, but we had that very similar discussion uh, in the past. Uh, it, it, that's a, it, I agree, yes. That's what do we charge for it now, though? If, it, if it's, somebody it's was It's non-resident for four hours, I think it's $100, which, $100 again, is, for four hours. But, and, and essentially, that's not to use it. Uh -huh. I think part of our discussion, we don't have somebody standing out there right now collecting so, money. Right. Um, it's, it's a reservation-style thing. Uh, if you wanted to reserve the courts, and, and it really, I think more, the fee was more deterrent to not have people reserve it because we wanted it for public use. But when I, you know, it, on, a, on a Saturday or Sunday, when, it, when that beach is packed, we, we don't want somebody to come out there and go, okay, here's the money, and they're just going to camp in the court and casual beachgoers don't get to utilize it. So that's where this being in the off hours makes it a good time. You know, we, people will see that the courts are good and they can utilize it and all that stuff. So. That'll be a fee, fee discussion for sure, though. Jay, Jay this doesn't cost us any money, right? There's no money? It doesn't cost us any money. And we're getting the parking revenue? People that are coming there, they're part, we're not giving them free Yeah, parking. I mean, that's the fee waivers for the volleyball courts. Okay. That's the only discussion. Okay. So. I, I, you know, you, and it's on the weekdays? It's not on the weekends? Correct. Okay. Um, Who would they even pay it to if they went out there? I mean, there's nobody. Well, that, that's part of the, the, <laughs> the reservation process. They would call us and go, hey, we want to have a party and we want to use the volleyball courts. Can you please put up a sign that says, and then we issue a permit. It's essentially a permit. So if, if I was out there playing volleyball on a time that somebody else had paid to reserve it, they would have the permit. So this is, and this would be, you know, we put some, you know, our, our little placard up that says that it is reserved for them and then we'll provide them with the necessary paperwork. So if there are people, um, you know, out there that, they don't have to deal with those issues. But again, it, it's not a high, it's not a peak time. It's not high activity. Um, it, it's just a, a really good opportunity, I believe. And how long would we be doing this for? I mean, you said right here that it's um, 300, the, the fees would total approximately $300. For what time period? I mean, what, how are you basing that $300, I reckon? Um, it came out to a total of, based on, they provided me with an invoice from what they, they paid downtown last year, which is a much further drive to. Um, it, it boiled down to, um, I think it was 15 actual occurrences. So, I mean, there, there, there's weather, of course. There's, you know, all sorts of different things. Um, and then the city that they were utilizing was a lower rate. So it was, uh, it, 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 I think it was a total of two months, though. But so it's spread out because they're going to have away matches. There's going to be days they don't practice. So it really just boils down to, um, this was kind of the, the ballpark average of that. And will they maintain it after they get through? Will they clean it up if we're giving it to them? Yeah, that, that's that'll be part of the that's part of the deal? agreement. Yes. Okay. You know, leave leave the beach as you as you found it. Leave it clean for the next person. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The floor is now open for public comment on this item. The floor is closed. I make a motion to pass uh, the Keswick Beach Volleyball Court Use Agreement and waive their fees. I'll second. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Andrews? Yes. Commissioner Douthard? Yes. Vice yes. Mayor Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Weinstein? Yes. Mayor Black? Yes. Next under new business, we have the resolution for uh, reduction of speed limit. City manager? 
I think we have the uh, we have one other issue that you wanted to take up on the uh, seafood festival, the closeout under unfinished business. Oh, okay. I was going to do that after. But yeah. Oh, well, I'm okay. We can do that after. It's, mine's real simple and short. <laughs> uh, we talked before about the the speed limit on the causeway. Uh, we've been getting some good uh, conversations as to uh, the requests that come directly from the commission to FDOT. Uh, they've been listening more. Uh, and my understanding is if we prepare or we vote on a resolution, it gets approved, uh, then we'll see some movement to lower the speed limit. And it's basically from Dume Road to uh, Gulf. Uh, I did extend it a little bit further than what we're looking at from the bridge to Gulf, just because of the school and the traffic congestion that we get in that area. So uh, we'll see if, you know, worst case scenario, they said, well, no, we'll only do it from the bridge to Gulf. But I, I think we have a good opportunity because Gulf Boulevard is 35 miles an hour. So why can't we have the causeway at 35 miles an hour? And uh, so I think it's worth a shot. And if you all agree, uh, if you vote to the affirmative, we'll get the resolution signed and move along. Any commission discussion? You know, I, I agree, and it, like I told you before, uh, Mr. Daniels, you know, the thing of it is, you can make it 10 miles an hour or whatever, and that's, it's enforced, and right now the speed limit on Gulf Boulevard is not enforced, and unless they enforce it, it's not, it's not going to do a damn bit of good. So it has, you know, we have, need to make sure that if we pass this, that it is enforced. Definitely. Floor is open for public comment. Robert Preston, 425 South Bayshore Drive, Madeira Beach. Um, I agree with John's statement there. And if you remember a few meetings back, I can't remember it, and we're talking about speed limits and stuff. And I think one of the officers came up, and they really don't do anything until they're five over, and very often they don't do anything until they're 10 over the speed limit. So when you're talking 40 miles an hour, and they're really not doing anything until they're doing 50. So if you do 35, they're really not going to do anything until they're doing 45. So again, with John's statement, we're really not enforcing the speed limit. And that's happening throughout the whole town, not just uh, 150th and Gulf Boulevard. It's our residential areas that are 25 miles an hour that aren't being enforced either. So thank you. Steve Kochuk, 15301 Second Street, East Madeira Beach. I know in the past we've done many uh, traffic surveys where the, they had the uh, machines out there to gauge the uh, speed of the traffic at all. I don't think anybody sitting up here could watch cars and say, okay, that car's going that fast, that car's going that fast. You really can't tell how fast cars are going. It's, you know, it's, it's, that's why they, they, they put those things. And yes, the cops give a little bit more. So what I'm hearing now is, Let's just get everybody tickets as much as possible because, no, not five over, not ten over, what has normally been, you know, the allowable, the allowable speed limit. People are driving, they're trying to get somewhere, they're trying to be safe and all. I, I don't understand where this comes up that all of a sudden this has become such a major problem that we're going to reduce the speed limit. I can see 35, all right, you want to keep it 35. You know, and then it changes to 40 as we get into Bay Pines and we start to move along and all. But, uh, you know, once again, that we've done many, many times in the past, we've, we've had the things out, and when it comes back with it, very few people are speeding around. Maybe they're doing over 25 or something, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a reality. It's, you know, is that really speeding? You know, you, you talk about it, you, you know, you say, oh, look how fast that guy is going. And you ask the cops, they'll say, that guy's probably doing 28, 29, 30 miles an hour. He's not doing 25. You know, once again, we go into a flurry and we want to change rules. We want to have ordinances. We want to do this, that, and the other thing, you know. At time, just step back a little bit until, until you have a real problem and all. We don't always have to jump into everything full force, and now we're going to change the world to be a better place. This ain't nothing going to change. 
Nothing going to change. I'm sure we have a lot more things to do that are a lot more beneficial to the city than every little thing that comes up, which turns around hurting people that aren't really doing anything. They're trying to go to and from work, to go to and from school, to stores and all. They're not really speeding. Y'all don't see anybody doing 70, 80 miles an hour flying around. And when they do, usually I see a cop get them. And the cops do pull them over. And it seems lately, cops are doing a lot of pulling over of a lot of cars. A lot more than I've seen in the past. I just would hope that you consider sometimes to not always be trying to hurt the citizens that maybe are going five minutes over the line. Because you're looking at your thing, 35 to 40 is not really a big thing. And I'll bet every one of you are speeders. Because I see little smirks on your faces, so I know that we all do it. We don't do it intentionally, but we do it. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? Floor is now closed. I'd like to make a motion to uh, pass resolution 202001. I'll second. I need to read the resolution yes, first, sir. and then I'll do the roll call. Resolution 2020-01, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the City of Madeira Beach, Pinellas County, Florida, requesting the reduction of the speed limit on Tom Stewart Causeway for 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour to the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT. Commissioner Weinstein? Yes. Commissioner Douthert? Yes. Commissioner Andrews? Yeah. Yes. Vice Sorry. Mayor Hodges? Yes. Mayor Black? Did we, I don't think we had a second, did we? Yes. We did. Oh, we didn't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so we are now on um, unfinished business. I've got scratches all over here. Unfinished, well, didn't. Move the seafood festival contest, the con contract Unfinished to business, new yeah. business? Unfinished. Well, we're on new business. We've already finished unfinished business. No. Well, we can put wherever you want. <laughs> the main thing is we want to close it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all that's left except yes. the staff report. So yep. let's go forward. Uh, good evening again. Um, I wrote this, this memo kind of uh, all in one with uh, the close out discussion of potential contract, uh, et cetera, but I will just speak on the close out of this previous year's event. Um, as of December 18th, 2019, uh, John's Best Village Association, City of Madeira Beach, had completed all the terms uh, within the contract related to the 2019 John's Pass Seafood Festival. So um, on page, uh, I believe it's numbered 58 of 93. In your packets, I basically went step by step through the contract and made notes and uh, basically checked off the boxes for each of those things. So uh, I guess at this point, in, in, in terms of uh, the contract and our opinion, uh, it, is, it has been completed. So uh, I guess I'll just field questions with whatever you may have um, related to this item. Uh, yes, Jay, I have some questions, please. Um, if you'll go to uh, page 13 of 93, 13 of 93, what was the reason for using a 2017 event permit application instead of a new one? Was there a reason for that? That's just a typo. It's the same. We, we changed the, the date on the top of that each year. Because the 18th one was totally different from this. Okay, well. Okay, and I was just curious down at the bottom, okay, um, under amplified sound on that same page, it shows um, the time sound begins at, I can't even see the number, but it doesn't give an ending. Was, is that not shown because our, because our noise ordinances give the time or? Uh, for the noise ordinance, it, it's, for an event like this, it's waived. Um, it's waived? Well, they, they, they typically, our noise ordinance on the weekend is till 11, the event ends at 10, so it's, they're, they're usually done by then. Um, they, it's just a 
you know, in, in the approval portion of it, well, that goes through the whole weekend of it, but. Okay. They just, well, they, they observe the ordinance per, I mean, per the approval letter, it says that they have to observe any of the ordinances unless they ask for a waiver. So in this case, there's no waiver asked for. So it's. Okay, I was just wondering why mm -hmm. it wasn't completed. Um, but then, and also the, the application isn't dated on the next page, but that's, I know that's no big deal, but since I do read everything, I just got to ask these questions. Um, on page 29 of 93, 29 of 93, where it talks about that we will be the headline for the annual John's Pass Seafood Festival, we'll be the headline sponsor, okay? And I just, I'm sure that you probably have looked at this and it might certainly be different for, you know, for uh, the future, but I did save this from the newspaper, okay? And, you know, there were, I mean, it was wonderful. Um, it was really great advertising and everything, but I noticed that Madeira Beach was like, you couldn't even see it. And it was because it was almost black on black up at the top and on the, on the same side. I don't know. It took me ages to even find it, okay? So I just thought I didn't understand if being the headliner, I reckon, because um, it wasn't even in this edition of the Weekender. It didn't say anything about Madeira Beach or the Seafood Festival. So it's just something to think about for next time, okay, um, that I just didn't understand. I'd be happy to pass these along to you just to, to show them to you. Okay. Um, but that was on page 29 of um, 93. And... Then um, on page 33 and 34, the temporary liquor license, the alcohol beverage and license, is for the period on both of them of October, well, one says October 25th, 2018, and the expiration date is October the 25th, 2018, instead of 2019. So I was just wondering... Th that's well, at an first error I thought, on... oh, that's just a typo, but it wouldn't yeah. be because, I mean, it's issued by the Department of Professional of Business and Professional Regulation. Now, that would, that would be an error on my part in searching for that liquor license to include in this packet. Um, I, it was emailed to me. I do have it because it's very Okay, so it's not this one. Yes. This is the wrong one. Yeah, okay. Just... okay, because on the back page, it also shows um, effective date October. It shows a different date than on the other side, okay? It Correct. shows the 26th through the 28th, but... The other one says shows the 25th, but, um, oh, and, okay, and then I, I have one other question, and I think that's it. Um, on, on page, okay, on page 50, 61 of 93, it shows down at the bottom on this third paragraph from the bottom, this year we had 98 out of 107 vendors participate in the event. Okay, then, do you see where it says that? Uh, yes. Okay, I don't expect you to figure it out here, but um, maybe we can get an answer you know, after this is over. But yeah, we had 98 out of 107 vendors participate. So then I went over to the Page 64, which, is a, which was the profit and loss statement. Under booth space rental. Okay? Yes. And I noticed, I, I looked at the figures for the $26,000, which is cool, but I, I went back to uh, the, it, it didn't show anywhere in our package here, okay, for 2019, what the actual booth space rental was you know, for the 10 by 10. But I know I used to do this for so many years for the Seafood Festival, I'm so used to doing it. I just kind of, it just caught my attention. Um, that for 2018, the 10 by 10 space was $375 for each 10 by 10 space, okay? So I multiplied that first time the 98 vendors to see if I could come up with 26,000, okay? And it came out to actually 36,750 for income. Then I went to 107 vendors because I didn't know which figure was applicable, okay? I, it really wasn't that clear to me. Multiplied that by the 375 and I came up with 40,000. So I'd just like for you to just clarify or just look back at that and see where that figure of $26,000 came from. Commissioner, I may be able to help. What, what happens is when the, some of the spaces are 
different sizes, and they also, if you get multiple spaces, you get a discount. So, for example, there were there were some vendors that had three or four spaces and had a bigger display. They didn't pay for, for four spaces; they probably paid for three and a half. I, I don't I don't think that that's our math that we have to do, though. So, I mean, we don't have this is just a their their this is their profit and loss statement. This has nothing to do with what the city receives. I, oh, I totally agree with you, Commissioner. I, I totally agree with you. But I just think that it's important to um, to have that uh, verified, you know, clarified, whatever. And I thank you very much. Any more discussion from the Commission? Thank you, Jay. All right, thank you. Madam Mayor, uh, I think it's going to need a formal vote to close out the 2019 year uh, and that will end their contract. So if, if you don't mind maybe taking public well, comment and then... We'll take uh, public comment at this time. Thank you. Public comment is now closed. Do you have a motion to... Uh, I'll make a motion to close out the Seafood Festival contract with pro forma uh, minus the three-year contract. I'll second. I'll second it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Two seconds. City Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Douther? Yes. Commissioner Weinstein? Yes. Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Andrews? Yes. Mayor Black? Yes. That should take us to staff reports, Madam Mayor. I was thinking that was correct, but <laughs> if you could look at my notes. Sorry for all the mix up. <laughs> all right, so now we have staff. Um, Director Pierce, this is the 2019 September Investment Report. Uh, Madam Mayor and Commissioners, um, the city's investment policy indicates that the investment reports needs to be provided to the Board of Commissioners um, and attached is the quality uh, qu quarterly investment report um, through September 30th, 2019, and the city's total cash and investments um, for this quarter did increase um, to $33,040,445, um, which basically increased very significantly because we're adding in the uh, $15 million that we got for the Capital Improvement Revenue Bond Series, uh, re which was received in July 2019. Um, one thing to comment on the report is uh, the yield for the uh, for the 15 million is been averaging 2.26 percent to 2.40 percent with Florida Palm, and the total interest earned through the end of uh, um, total interest through the end of uh, FY 2020 is projected to be 376,431. Um, interesting to note that uh, we only have, we don't have a principal payment due this year, just interest um, payment of, uh, uh, of basically um, $372,600. So um, basically we've, we have the opportunity to use this money for 15 months for basically nothing. Um, which, when I shared that with the uh, our investment advisor, he he was very pleased about that, and that's something that you know is hard to plan, even if you want to. Um, the city continues excellent yield with Hancock Bank, and as the board knows, in March 2019, um, we renewed the banking services for an additional uh, uh, three years. The interest rate was locked in at 0 0.70 for those three years. Um, when we renewed the agreement, we locked it in to 2.43%. So that interest rate does not change. So, and we've been um, uh, gaining um, significant numbers uh, because of that. Is there any other questions at the board? Well, Walter, what, what fees did we pay on that? I, I, we get, we're getting an interest-free loan for 15 months, and we paid no fees on it, the $15 million? Um, basically, the first year, there's no principal payment. There's just interest, um, uh, just interest of 372600 That we're paying. That's We're paying. Okay. We've already paid half of that. 
we make, uh, which we did in November, we'll make the other half payment um, probably sometime in um, May or June. Okay. And there, again, there's no principal payment for the first year. Uh, no, next year we saying. will I, have. I, just, I, I think I'm confused though. You're saying we received $375,000 in interest payments for having the $15 million in the bank, but we've only paid out 372? We are projecting about that 370. So we're making money on a, we're, we're, that, that, we're basically breaking even and using this money, basically having it available for 15 months. Oh, I, I understand. I, I, I just, I understand the concept. I just can't understand the concept of we're making money on a loan. We're making more money on interest than we're paying in interest. Well, the interest rate is, is, is been reaching or averaging between two point, I mentioned the 2.26% to 2.40 and more toward the 2.40%. Um, the interest that we're paying are the bank that gave us this money is right at 3%. So, um, we have the opportunity, um, of, uh, of, of using this money basically, like I said, 15 months. As things, if things hold the way they are, um, we'll be using this money and basically not paying anything. Now, next year, 2021, we're, we're looking at a million dollar payment. So um, okay. that's right. when um, we're going to start to make payments against this loan. Okay. All right. I, I just, I think we got to be a little bit more upfront on that. Let's, you know, we're not making money. On the borrowed money. If that's the case, let's go get a hundred million and put it in the bank. We're not making. I would say I would prefer say that if everything holds true, we would be breaking even uh, with the interest earned and interest expense. And again, it's a great um, financial position to be in. And I guess I would like to end um, with the comment that the board received the Moody's report that, that was issued. Um, the city couldn't be in any better financial um, shape than it is right now. Keep taking care of our money. Uh, I just wanted to hone in on Walt's report here. Don't run away. Um, just uh, yesterday or this morning, I'm trying to remember when it actually happened, the days uh, running yes together yesterday. yesterday. We uh, received from uh, September 30th of 2018 mm -hmm. was a certificate of excellence in financial reporting from the government uh, accounting uh, Association, correct? Yes. I have that right? GFOA. GFOA. And uh, so I, I just, again, it just means that all the preparation work that we go through with the budgets, obviously I wasn't here for the 2018 budget, so none of that credit goes to me. It all goes to Mr. Pierce, and uh, he also gets a uh, certificate of achievement. And our finance department, which I thought was great from the GFOA, uh, they also get a certificate of achievement as well, knowing that it's a team effort. So uh, I just wanted to thank you, thank you, Walt, and continue with the good work. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to say that uh, uh, I have to credit my, my staff. I've received um, sev several of these in my past, and this is my second one since being here. And the, these two that I've received here, um, I have... I will treasure them above all the others. Um, they mean more more to me um, because I think of the hard hard work that we've all done here in the last couple of years. Thank you. Next, we have um, personnel changes staff report from Paulson. Actually, we're going to do that as part of the uh, uh, workshop. So, so, but I do have items under my reports, but we have the city commission reports, so the attorneys before me. So okay. I will yield to the higher authorities. City attorney, do you have any correspondence? Or Nothing this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I, just wanted, oh. I would just like to comment on the city commission um, report about the resiliency uh, seminar that I went to for those two days. There were two really important things, I think, that, and I'm sure that Linda will bring them up at the workshop when she gives a small report, but I think it's to the credit to the uh, administration, too, uh, and, and to the commissioners who um, were had enough foresight to vote for the 
um, for the generator, which we're working on with City Hall. That was a big hot item at the Resiliency Conference, and one of the things that people from Houston, Texas, and New York, and other places that were affected by a lot of hurricane damage th throughout the years came to us and told us how important it was for City Hall uh, for any city hall of any size to uh, to be able to take care of the especially the employees, the staff after an emergent after a natural disaster because they're the ones who take care of our city and I think that that was a really good thing and then the other item um, that that they um, addressed was the um, the beaches, and we, were, we talked about the red tide, okay, and the wonderful effort that Madeira Beach made uh, after the wet, red, red tide um, with Jonathan Evans and Kelly, gosh, I can't think of her name, from Pinellas County, who coordinated the efforts to bring in all that thousands and thousands of pounds of dead fish, and it was that was a hot topic, too, at that resiliency conference. It was really well, it was well attended. There were 300 people there. Charlie Crist was there, and the mayors of, you know, the 21 different communities on the beaches, of which you were one mayor who had signed the resiliency effort to begin with. So it was really a, an excellent conference. Thank you. City Clerk, do you have any uh, reports or correspondence? I do. I do. The first one is the, uh, the city manager had me to draft a special meeting agenda for January 28, 130. At 1.30 for the uh, award and RFP for the contract for Crystal Island Roadway Improvements Project. And he needs the approval of the special meeting. From the commission, yes. And, and that's, uh, they're opening up those uh, bids on the 21st. And we'll have them ready for you to review. And, and uh, hopefully it won't be a long meeting, but we figure we do it right before the workshop. So we're not bothering you. 28th. So, uh, is, yes. is that a consensus from the commission? We're okay with oh. that? You know, just the way the charter is, it's, you know, it's kind of unclear. So I'd rather bring these up at the meetings uh, so you all can make a decision if you don't want to have a meeting and voice your displeasure. Yes, Madam I have Clark. one more item. It's the announcement of the qualified candidates for the March 17th, 2020 municipal election for the mayor's seat, which is a three-year term, uh, John B. Hendricks and Gary L. Hughes, and Commissioner District 1, two-year term, Helen Happy Price and Debbie Weinstein, which is the incumbent. And for Commissioner District 2, Nancy Hodges had no uh, oppos opposition in there in the uh, qualifying period, so she would be sworn in when uh, the other new commissioners will be sworn in in March. And right now, currently, according to the supervisor of the elections, when, because of this is the, that presidential year thing, uh, the swearing in may not take place until March the 31st. But if that should change, I'll let everybody know. Uh, we have to wait on the uh, canvassing board to certify the official results. And so if that should get moved up, I'll let everybody know. Thank you, Claire. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor, I, if I may, I've got two issues. I'd like to tell you they were going to be short. One will probably be short. And, the other one, uh, I want an update from uh, uh, Jerry on our uh, impact fees, so uh, everybody's aware of it. Uh, but just quickly before uh, Jerry speaks, I, I kind of asked uh, everyone about the format for the town hall meeting that we have scheduled for the 21st, uh, and I've kind of set some ground rules of, of working it out, and then uh, I, I know we're in the election season now, uh, so I know there's some concerns out there. You know, maybe is this the time we should do it, or should we wait till after the election? So I just wanted to ask you all if you wanted to continue to go ahead with it for the 21st, and if you do, uh, you know, I have some suggestions on, you know, kind of the format for it, if, if you'd like. So I'll leave that for a point of discussion, Mr. City Manager. Yeah, I um. 
I proposed this a while ago, and I, I know it took a while to get it all, all kind of going, but, you know, I've had a couple people come to me, um, people that aren't really even politically involved, that have asked, said, you know, it's probably not, since people have qualified for the election already, um, it's probably best to leave this alone until after the election's over. I don't know, you know, to, to use, because it, 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 it could be perceived as, as another forum for the candidates or a candidate on the board to, to be able to express their positions on certain things where the other uh, candidates running don't get a chance to do that. Um, I say we just kind of, uh, I, I definitely still want to do it. We also didn't get an opportunity to get out to the public to find out what topics they wanted to discuss. And I think that that's really the most important aspect of this thing. I mean, we're a week away and we haven't had any any feedback from uh, from the community. So um, if, it, if it's all the same to everybody else, I'd just rather postpone it until after the election. I really hadn't thought about it myself in that term. Um, I was thinking of more of just being an outpouring of, you know, the community and the, you know, the board and and what's going on. But it could, and and, and we can do it without having any political dialogue. But it could still sneak in there. So perhaps we should postpone it. Yeah, because every, everything that comes up is, I mean. Political. It's political. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever we talk about it is, you know, is, is a community issue. So it's definitely going to be viewed as political. I just think, you know, just for our own sanity and to just kind of stay on the, you know, keep the playing field even. I just think we bag this for a while and uh, we'll revisit it again after the election's over. We have a consensus to do that. Mm, yeah, I guess. I, I would really like to still have um, certainly an update uh, from you know, before the end of March or before into April, um, with regards to the impact fees, what we're, where we are with it. Okay. We're gonna, right. We're going to hear that. And we're going to hear that tonight. Okay. And then mm -hmm. the other thing too is the, um, the idle, the, uh, idle speed, the, the live awards and the idle speed thing. I think that oh, that's, yeah. uh, I envision that certainly to be on the town hall meeting because I know there's a lot of people interested in that subject, and so maybe we can fit that in somewhere else on yeah, a future agenda give, before. Right, we can before. give an interim report on it, and then we can discuss it in a town hall after the election if that's... Right, and nothing, nothing stops us from putting one of those issues on a workshop. That's totally different. It's an already right. scheduled meeting. I just think it just... It might, it might play poorly if we if we schedule a meeting that is not for that purpose. So that's just my thoughts. And some of those issues, like the liver boards, can be addressed in the manager's report or even at you know, breakfast with Bob. Okay. Is that okay? Um, and then, if I may, uh, Mr. Murphy is going to give you an update on the uh, impact fees and. Kind of ask for a little bit of direction, and uh, I won't take all of Jerry's thunder. So. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, commissioners. For the record, Jerry Murphy with the University of Florida Program for Resource Efficient Communities. What you are being handed out by the town manager is an interim report on the impact fees. We presented this to the Planning Commission uh, last evening, and <clears throat> they had a good, I think, good discussion back and forth. Um, and then they ultimately um, moved to recommend it forward. Um, so I'm providing it to you all. I know you haven't had a chance to really look at it. There is a one-page executive summary that sort of lays out the details. What our initial evaluation shows <clears throat> is basically the current comprehensive plan, particularly the capital improvement element, has levels of service standards, but they're not very granular. They're not measurable. And in order to construct an impact fee that's legally defensible, that data has to be granular. <clears throat> so what you have right now, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> is a requirement of five acres of parks for every thousand people. That's an example of one of your level of service standards. So when you get another thousand people in population, depending on what your current inventory of parks are, and we haven't delved into that, you would have to acquire another five acres of parks. Well, your parks and recreation program is much more robust than five acres of land. 
you have all sorts of facilities, you provide all sorts of services, um, and, and that none of that is captured in the comprehensive plan. So our first recommendation is that you establish some level of service standards that actually provide what the current level of services you're providing in the various aspects that impact fees can be used for. Then the second thing in the recommendation is to move forward with establishing those level of service standards and as the first item for your impact fee program would be um, a mobility plan and fee. In your strategic plan, that is a high-ranking um, desire of the city, is to have a mobility plan, and uh, impact fees are also in, entwined with that. The impact fees help to fund the, the plan forward. Um, and so those are, those are our current recommendations. Um, as I said, the Planning Commission endorsed that. And I'm not looking for anything from you today but direction in terms of do you want us to, we were considering the town hall, that seems to be moot at this point on the 21st. Do you want us to bring this forward in a formal way after you've had an opportunity to review the report at your workshop on the 28th? Or do you want to direct us to just continuing moving forward, in which case I will get with the town manager and we'll develop a task order that you can approve at your regular meeting on the 11th, unless he has a way of, with you and, uh, among you and he, bringing that forward sooner. We're just trying to stay nimble, and this is an update, as was requested by the commission on a regular basis. So this is the first threshold. Um, this report outlines the deficiencies in the current comprehensive plan and the land development regulations, but primarily it's the comprehensive plan where in your capital improvement plan and element you provide these levels of service that we have to have in a much more granular mode to develop legally defensible impact fees. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Why did it take us this long, this long to get to this point? I, you know, I guess when we started this, we looked at you know, this being, it wasn't going to take five years to come up with the impact fees. You know, it's, it just seems like this is dragging out, and I, I don't understand why it's taken six months to get our first update. You know, it, it doesn't make sense to me. The contract between the city and the university was not formally executed until October, and so it really hasn't been that long. I know I've been talking to you a lot longer. I was talking to you back when Jonathan Evans was the manager. So we didn't have a formal platform upon which we could actually do the work. Um, we also had some um, work that was not involving impact fees that we were involved with. But your, your comprehensive plan, you know, we had to do a thorough analysis of that, and we had to look at your land development regulations, and it's not an overnight thing. And I've also tried throughout the process of our engagement to educate both the Planning Commission and the Commission on the the necessary um, niceties of impact fees with regard to legal defensibility. How much longer are we talking that this is going to take? I mean, is it going to be done in six months, six years? I, I, I guess some, some type of time frame. I would say that we would like to have the level of service standards adopted by the board um, in the spring, somewhere between March, April, and then do the first mobility fee by the summer. Um, you know, part of the issue is, is your process. So your manager wants to have reports to him a month in advance so that they can be scheduled. Staff needs an opportunity to review and comment on things that we've done before they're presented to you to make sure, because it is a collaborative effort, to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward with the commission. Uh, again, the reason I'm here tonight, and we're kind of walking this item on, is so that you can direct us to be as nimble as you want us to be. But we do need to, you know, uh, um, follow your process, and we also want to be transparent. So we've had, you know, meetings there the public could be engaged and provide an opportunity to comment on yay or nay. Everything that we've heard so far seems that there is a desire to go forward with the impact fees. The direction that we had initially was to explore the issue, and so we've explored the issue. This interim report or um, initial report lays out what the next step should be, and we want your direction as we move forward. You know, I, I, you know, I understand that you know the buildings are going up now; they're not affected at all. You know, but okay, the building I live in is 50 years old, and there's built buildings a lot older. Those are the ones that are going to be affected down the road. Uh, if I'm if I'm understanding impact fees correctly, you know, if, if 
the building I'm in has to be torn down and somebody, a developer comes in and rebuilds it, they're the ones that are going to be start being charged impact fees. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. But, you know, I guess I also, at the same time, look at this thing as, you know, I just don't want to keep dragging it out. I, I would like to put uh, uh, to the board, you know, hey, we're going to give, Mr. Murphy, we're going to give him X amount of time to do this. If it's six months, if it's six years, I don't care. But I think we need to come up with a time frame. But it seems like, to me, he says it's October. It seems like, like he said, it started when Jonathan was here, and it just took a long time, I guess, to get the contract. But it, to me, it seems like it's dragging out, you know, and, and the cost is going to drag out if we keep going with this. So I think we need to really look at the cost and, and the timelines um, that, that we're authorizing, you know, um, for this, in my opinion. Mayor. Commissioner, I just wanted to point out, Oops. if it's an existing unit and it's a replacement unit, then there's not an impact fee. It's only units that go above and beyond what's there currently. Uh, well, Either a number of units or possibly might be able to look at bedrooms in certain circumstances. But if, they have to, if they have to tear my building down because it's old and fallen down, then in, in a, in a contractor comes in and is going to build a new building there. They should be impacted. In, in or they should. How be, many units do you have? 50, 49. If the contractor comes in and just builds another 50 or 49, there won't be an impact fee. If he builds 100, there will be an impact fee. That's conceptually correct, but depending on how you construct your fee. So if they were to build 50 larger units, there could be an increase in square footage, which would be an additional impact, again, if that's the policy that the board adopts. Just take good care of your building, John. <laughs> Please take good care of your building for another five years. Well, then you can hope. Well, I won't be here 10 um, years, 20 years from now and we'll be underground. I think we need to take this to the workshop and really talk about this and, and, and you know, look at the dollars that it's going to cost the city, you know, um, and between what our attorney says and what Mr. Murphy's saying, you know, if, if my building falls down, they're going to build up the exact same thing. There's not going to be any impact fees anyway. So, you know, well, if it's the exact same square footage, there is no impact is what he just said. But if it's, 100 square feet more, you know, then how does that? So these are things that I think we need to, to discuss at a workshop and really figure out, you know, is, is this being cost effective at this time? Yeah, I think you're right, John. I agree. I, I would also, if we could, invite at least a few members of the Planning Commission. I think they've delved into this a little deeper than we have. Did, Mike, did you guys, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Noble, <laughs> did, did you guys, you, you guys talked sure. about this last night. You want to come up real quick? Sure. Hi, Mike Noble, Chairman, Planning Commission. Now, Jerry gave us a presentation yesterday, and some of these questions we went over, uh, we discussed it amongst ourselves. And, uh, you know, it, it just seems like it's an opportunity for the city if we are moving forward with, you know, the, well, you have a building, somebody takes our house, and they're going to tear it down and build a bigger one, then they're going to pay a little bit of an impact fee. There are already impact fees at the county, is is getting and that does benefit us because they're managing our water and sewer so those impact fees are already on these new buildings so we can have as a community other impact fees that we want that would benefit us even better from where we understood it so it just seems like you guys have to say yes let's just keep moving forward with this and that way this gives jerry direction on what he would need to do Seems like a great idea, like a missed opportunity. So I, you know, I think that uh, the, as the planning commission, we said yes. We recommend that uh, his report, you review it, and let's move forward with it. Any questions or? You know, Mike, I, I agree with you, um, and that's why I push for impact fees since I've been on the board. You know, I've asked for them, but you, you know, um, most of our city is is um, developed probably at least 80, 85 percent. You're right. Now, like um, those houses, they tore down and they put up bigger houses. Yeah, they're, but they're not going to be paying. They're just going to pay a portion of the impact fee from what I just understood. Am I correct? They're not going to be paying the whole impact fee. So, you know, this is something I think we need to look at the dollars and cents on what we're paying versus our 
dollar return down the road. You know. Yeah, if you're tearing down a little cottage and then they're going to build a you know three stories above parking, there's going to be an impact fee because of you know there's going to be more services needed. The way I see it as really beneficial. God forbid we ever get hit by a big storm and everything's kind of wiped out like might just happened up in Panama City, then, you know, really we want to have this in place because that's going to be a citywide thing where a lot of people aren't going to just build a thousand foot, two bedroom, one bath, little cracker cottage. They're going to build a, a you know, three bedroom, and I two and a half bath. So I, I think having it in place makes sense. You know, but if, if, if that happened, and we, God forbid it ever happens, you know, here, and Ocean Sands, is, that big building's torn down, you know, and they build up the exact same footprint, there's going to be no impact fee. Correct. If they do the, exactly the same thing, there won't be any impact fees. But I think history has shown that we're not tearing down buildings and building the same ones. People are typically, let's, let's maximum what's there, and we're not getting what we should be getting as a community. I agree. That, you know, the county is, we missed some opportunities, but we can't look back. we got to just keep moving forward. I agree. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, if, if, I, uh, if I may, we can, uh, Jerry, is there a way that you can look at maybe other communities that have been close to build out and have instituted a program to make some comparisons maybe yeah we'll absolutely do that that's part of the defensibility argument we don't so, we don't want to do something that's totally unique but do you, you think you could have that for like some type of information in that regard for the workshop on the 28th sure Is that ask okay so and hopefully that what Jerry can come up with will address maybe some of the concerns that you have thank you thank you Ms. Murphy yes sir Thank you very much. Yeah, I definitely want to go. I'm, I'm for going forward on it because I think that we identified it over a year ago as something that we wanted to do. We committed ourselves to the funds. I mean, we didn't spend them yet, but we committed ourselves to the funds knowing that it was a long, I mean, I figured it was going to be a long-term thing. I figured it was going to take between eight months and a year to to get to the point after you, because you have to identify everything to begin with. You have to start from scratch. So I guess that's where uh, I, I feel that it's definitely a, a worthwhile project, and I think it's an opportunity, too, for the future. So if, as long as we get a report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. With that, meeting is adjourned. 7.55.